Okay, welcome back. This is video number eight of this video series of carving this little caricature figure. I'm going to call him a cowboy because that's what I'm going to aim him towards. You call him whatever you want. If you want to, you even turn him into a woman. Don't care. It's not, this is not to show you how to carve a cowboy. It's to show you how to carve a, a caricature out of a block of wood because we started with a block of wood. And after seven videos of about 15 minutes each, we're at the point now that hopefully everybody can see that. Let's work on, we talked about rounding when we left. Let's work a little bit more on rounding because really what I want is I want separation between the legs. Don't have enough of that yet, but I, I do want some of that. And so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to start taking the tip of our knife and, and you need a good knife that's strong but flexible or at least has a rounded back. When I talk about a rounded back, I mean the back sides of this are not square. If they're really flat, you can't roll that knife in there. When I mean roll, I mean you start one direction and as you turn, the back of that knife doesn't get in the way. It's, it's rounded out and it allows you to do that. This knife that I'm using today, uh, Dell Stubbs at Pinewood Forge made it and they're one of the best knives I've ever used in, in terms of being able to do that. I've got several other knives that do the same thing, but this is one that I know does that so, so I can go straight to it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm getting deeper and deeper into that hole that I drilled and I'm separating these legs out a little bit more. Now, understand that we want to add detail to these legs, some wrinkles, some roundedness, some, some texture and perspective. And so I, I, I want to make sure I've got enough room to do that. And so all I'm doing is just taking this knife and I'm rounding the inside hole. It's not the easiest thing to do if you've never done it because it, it takes the right tool and the right vision of being in there. We're going to now separate these legs. But one thing I've got to do is I've drawn a center line. That's the line that connects this front line and this back line. So that's the center line. And so now I've got to figure out where the shoes are going to go. And I'm going to give this guy some, some boots. And so basically my shoe's got to fit in the, the, his, his right shoe, right and left. So the right shoe has to fit in here and the left shoe has to fit in here. Well, the thing you got to remember about cowboy boots is they usually come to a point or some kind of end. And it's not rounded like your dress shoe or your tennis shoe. But it basically comes somewhat like that. So I'm going to draw those two in. And I've got, when I'm done with them, I'll mark them up in black marker. We'll be able to see them. There's an insole somewhere in here the inner of the shoe and with a cowboy boot generally the back part is narrower than the front part. I don't have to follow that wisdom if I don't want to. I can do any kind of shoe I want on this fella. I could have him with a work boot on. Draw on that a little bit thicker than I want. I could have him with a work boot on. I don't care. And if you notice this shoe is a little bit wider than that one so we're going to come over here and make it wider too. Okay, grab my marker. One of the best things you can do to make shoes, make sure the shoes are exactly right, is to draw a piece of paper the size of one, one shoe, trace that, flip it over, and the other side will be exactly the same size when you flip that. Now we're gonna do this guy without, without having anything pointed like one foot you could point it off to that way one you could point them in where they're pigeon toed I'm not going to do that we're just do it where I'm showing you how to do a basic shoe a basic boot and that's what this looks like here's the left here's the right as you flip them over okay so all of this stuff in the middle all this black stuff is going to go away so that I can leave the shoe by itself where you start is up to you I generally start on the outside. I want to get that shape right. So 
Sometimes you can carve straight down through that wood. Sometimes you have to carve up. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it's best if we do it this way. Got that corner. Got that corner. A little bit more. Corner. Take off these back corners. Remember that at the back we can have the, the pant leg back here. So we don't necessarily want to remove as much on the back as we did on the front. You know the front, unless you draw it that way, it's up to you. But we know the front is going to be the toes sticking out. So whether you drag them all the way to the back like this or leave a little bit stuck up there, we're going to put his pants on his shoes or ever how we feel like it. But we got to start with some cuts. And you can do this with a V-tool, bring a big V-tool and do that, but one of the best ways to do that is just come in here at an angle and start removing that wood. There ain't no other way to do that but to just get in there and start cutting it out. Okay. And we do that to both sides, both front and back, sorry, not both sides. Like I say, I usually do this in my lap. I don't usually do it up here on top of the table. But the advantage of that is I got all the cleanup, all the chips land, land out here instead of in the floor or down in my shoes. So there's an advantage to do this. So doing it this way. I always try to look at the positive side of things. I always find, I look for two things. Where, where's the fun? Where's the funny? And where's the positive? I try to be as positive as I can. I'm not always that way, but I try to be. And the positive of this, is all the chips land in one space, I can just sweep them right off in the garbage can. Anyway, you get an idea of what we're doing. We're trying to get to where it's separated. And I got a lot of wood between here and here. And so I'm just going to keep on doing that. Again, when I do that, I know I'm still not into the shoe. So I don't have to worry about that. One of the things you can do is stop cut it from underneath. And so if I stop cutting it from underneath, that allows me to cut from underneath and get there too. And so I can keep doing that. And eventually, if I cut enough, I get to where I can cut right between the, right between the shoes. Anyway, a lot of cutting we got to get out there. I told you I wasn't going to do any of this with power. Normally I would cut this out with the bandsaw. Um, if you don't have a bandsaw and you want to cut it out, a coping saw works perfectly for this. A coping saw is a little small D-ringed blade that uses basically the same blade as a scroll saw. They're narrow, they're small, and they're flexible. And in fact, a D a coping saw can be so flexible that your carving line, your drawing line gets a little bit off. But you can see what we're doing there. And again, looking at the bottom, we can take off more of this up the front. That gives us more room to get in there. I apologize if I keep getting offline a little bit. My camera's right up above me. A lot of times I get to where I'm gravitating towards one side of the viewing area than the other, and I apologize if that happens. I don't have an editor standing over top of me telling me what to do. It's just me and the camera and the tools, so bear with me. One of these days I'm going to investigate video editing and figure out how to make a better video. Um, some of you that do video or use it, if you know of a good program that's easy to use for an old 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 guy that I don't want to eschew technology. I use it as I need to, but I don't want to spend a lot of time learning technology. I'd rather carve. I'm kind of stuck in the let me play with wood and tools mode rather than let me play with a, a, a mouse and a computer. Not my favorite thing to do. I do them a lot. 
it's not where I, where I would normally want to spend time. I'm carving during the coronavirus epidemic right now, and we've canceled school, and nobody's up doing school things, and so it becomes an issue of, are you going to go stir crazy, or are you going to find plenty to do? Well, I've got videos, and I've got books, and I've got carvings I want to do. I've got a closet full of blanks and rough outs, some of my own, some of somebody's somebody's that I, I picked up from them, but I got plenty to do. I, I We're going to be shut in here for at least two weeks, maybe even more, and I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm having fun with y'all, and you're having fun with me, I hope, and we're just enjoying the time off. I worry about the political side of things. How's this going to look when we're all done? What does it look like? Is it going to divide us more or is it going to bring us back together? But that's all politics, and I do not like talking politics, so we're not going to do that. Kind of worn out the little bit of the leg. We'll, we'll move on from that. That's, that's one of those things you can do on your own. When we get down to it, we'll start to shape them a little bit more. But these legs are kind of fat. I want to cut in the arms. I want, to, I want to show you how to do that so that you can, I'll do one and you can do the other as off on your own. I know where I want to go. I know where the arms are going to be. And in reality, I could angle them in a little bit more. I, I generally don't. Shoulder's going to be somewhere around right here. So let's angle that just a little bit more back there. That'll give me more at the back to fool with. But I basically want... I want to take out, start taking out this chip right in here. And I got a neat little tool that I'm going to show you that was made by a guy I met down at the John C. Campbell's Folk School. I'll show you when we get down in here how that does that. Anyway, one of the ways to do that is to stick that knife down in that elbow. It's going to go in there fairly deep. It should stick. When you do that, pull it out, come out to the end of the sleeve, and do that up here as well. Now I can do this with a, with a, with a fishtail gouge, but you got to be careful with jamming that down in there. It's easy to do that. Come out here and don't cut anything but the sleeve. Okay. I can do that with my knife. Make that stop cut. Make that stop cut. Start removing wood. And what we want to do is get that down to where we've got enough room to have an arm. And you want to get fairly deep. We'll round this over because all of this is going to come, a good portion of this is going to come off. We're going to leave enough for his belly. But we're just basically going to outline that, outline that arm. And we're using a, a, a flat plane style of carving right now because I'm just removing the arms and I'm just gonna shape them into shapes when I get there. But whether you use a fishtail gouge or you use a straight knife, it doesn't take much and you've got that arm pretty much put in where you wanna put it. We'll add a whole lot more details as we go. But you see that arm coming in. I've left the shoulders real square. We'll angle those in when we figure out what kind of bandana we want on there. But that's what you're going to do. The back side of that arm, I just take a V-tool and go right up the side and lay it back so I'm not straight up. I'm laid, I'm laid over on one side. And that's the, the back of the arm and the bottom of the arm. Don't go all the way down to your line. You want to leave a little bit because now you're going to shape the back over to that. So we'll come back and we'll do the other arm and we'll do the rest of that. And we'll, uh, we'll just keep on going with this fella. I'm liking him and I hope you do too. Anyway, this is the end of video eight. We'll talk to you on video nine. See you later.